These are two people that are equally sick by whatever criteria you want to use, and their lives are of equal value and each deserve an equal chance at a life-saving liver. This represents what liver allocation should be and is equality. This is a blank map that is not divided. There are no lines and it is the same color everywhere. This represents what liver distribution should be. There should be equity and it should be fair. But the truth today is a different reality. There is a difference in the opportunity for transplant depending upon where you live. This representation shows the wide variation in the ratio of the number of eligible donors to the number of people waiting. In lighter areas, there is nearly one liver for each person waiting, compared to darker areas where there are as few as one liver for every five people waiting. And those two people who are equally as sick have different opportunities for transplant depending upon where they live and unfortunately their socioeconomic status. The country was divided into 11 regions 27 years ago, and this has been our distribution system. Waiting time was the driver of who got these precious life-saving resources, and this was our allocation system. The disparity issues are not new, and was such a problem for our community that the final rule was published to help guide us. Neither place of residence nor place of listing shall be a major determinant of access to a transplant. But implementation of the final rule was suspended by Congress 18 years ago, and the Institute of Medicine was mandated to weigh in, and they made three major recommendations. First, create a disease severity score, which is MELD, so that patients with the highest risk of dying could be stratified based on need. The higher the score, the higher the risk of dying without a transplant. Secondly, eliminate waiting time. And third, establish larger geographic areas, 9 million they determined for liver distribution. The Institute of Medicine agreed that the final rule should assure that allocation of scarce organs would be based on common medical criteria, not accidents of geography. Despite the implementation of MELD 15 years ago, the disparity has worsened. Today, the difference in the median MELD score at the time of transplant ranges from a score as low as 23 points in greener areas to as high as 35 points in bluer areas, depending upon where in the country one is transplanted. You don't need to understand a lot of math, square roots, standard deviations, to understand that this is a really big difference, and it represents a 60% difference in one's risk of death based on geography alone. In other words, two people with the same MELD score and the same risk of dying should have the same opportunity for life, but they do not. And the difference can be as dramatic as having as low as a 12% chance of getting a liver in a bluer area to as high as a 64% chance of getting a liver in a greener area. Today, geography does determine life and death. And why does geography determine life and death? There are very basic reasons related to supply and demand. Here is a representation of stroke death rates in the United States, and the supply of donors is greatest in the darkest purple areas with the highest stroke rates. On the other hand, the need for liver transplant is greatest on the east and west coasts as well as in Texas. So what happens? What happens is exactly what you and I would do if your brother, sister, wife, husband, or your children needed a life-saving transplant. We would look to see how they can get it the fastest. So people travel. A lot of people travel. And according to UNOS data, after you exclude those donor service areas without a liver transplant program, 24% of patients are transplanted outside of their local area. Many of these patients travel to gain a MELD advantage. That's one out of every four patients. They fly from California to Louisiana and Tennessee, and from New York to Florida, Ohio, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. And if it were one of my family members, I would do the exact same thing. And who are these people that travel? They are richer, they are more educated, and they are more likely to have private health insurance. And I don't blame them or the doctors that send them, but that is not fair. And transplanting someone from across the country with a local liver is not serving local patients. It's just doing another transplant locally. Nearly 20% of patients waiting today, one out of five, have state Medicaid. So requiring us to offer them multiple listing options is actually unethical. They can't go even if they wanted to. 
There are three major concerns that I will now address. Maybe some regions inflate MELD scores with exceptions. Maybe underperforming OPOs are to blame. Maybe we haven't studied this enough. First, let's start by remembering what exceptions are. These additional points allow us to equalize the risk of dying without a transplant when the risk is not adequately reflected by the MELD score. Exception points do artificially inflate MELD scores. Of course they do. That's the intention. We all agree that some patients and some conditions need consideration beyond MELD, and we need to recognize these together and account for them uniformly. Secondly, Look at this map of our 58 donor service areas. No one could have possibly designed this for equitable liver distribution, and it wasn't. It's an historical accident, and shame on us for continuing to accept this, especially when the Institute of Medicine, the smartest guys in the room, without self-interest or conflict, recommended changing it almost 20 years ago. Many of our OPOs with the highest number of listed patients serve areas with our lowest donation rates, and it's not because they don't do a good job with donation, but these are parts of the country with very low death rates. Many have expressed concern about OPO performance, but this has been fully analyzed by the SRTR. There is no correlation between OPO performance and disparity. Look at this graph of supply and demand. Over 26,000 people were waiting at some point last year for a life-saving liver transplant. Everyone agrees that we should do everything we can to improve donation. And even if every OPO functioned equally as well, and even if every potential donor donated, the studies indicate that there would be an estimated 1,300 additional livers over a nearly six-year period. That comes out to about 225 more livers per year. But this cannot be the extent of the solution. We must fix the distribution system if we are to have equity. And we have studied this in depth. It's been over six years since the Board of UNOS resolved to address this issue. During that time, there have been four chairs and over 75 members of the Liver Intestine Committee who have represented all of the regions. There have been three national forums, first in Atlanta and then two in Chicago. There have been 43 alternative models evaluated. There have been over 400 simulations run. There have been eight official reports to the OPTN and HRSA, totaling 481 pages. In comparison, in the same time frame, the new kidney system involved two official reports totaling 111 pages and was fully implemented two years ago. We have deliberated over this for 18 years. This has been an exhaustive, consensus-driven process with too many analyses and a paralysis to make any significant change. So what is the proposal that has finally made it through this rigorous, consensus-driven process that brings us to the Board of UNOS 18 years later? It's an eight-district model with 150-mile proximity circles. These eight districts are the result of established mathematical optimization to align areas of higher supply with areas of higher need. Adding proximity circles achieves an important goal as it ensures that livers will not travel over local recipients for just one or two meld point differences, regardless of what district that donor is located in. And let me emphasize that one of the constraints in the design of this model was that there would be no increase in waiting list deaths. Redistricting should be combined with a National Liver Review Board. Ensuring uniformity with additional points for exceptions is important to ensuring fairness. However, geography does determine life and death. For example, we give tumor patients the same number of points regardless of where they live. In Region 3, that translates into a 90% chance of being transplanted within three months. While if that same exact patient lived in Region 1, that chance goes down to 20%. Equal need, unequal opportunity, not fair. Together, these proposals lead to improved distribution and allocation, and we will start to see equalization of MELD scores so that two people who are equally in need will actually have a similar opportunity regardless of where they live. In addition to creating equity, these proposals actually save more lives. And this, this is the foundation upon which we can build to further reduce disparities. There are logistical considerations, and yes, 
more liberals will need to be flowing. Not dramatically more, we already have about 55% traveling, but 10% more will fly. And this will hardly cause a problem with air traffic control in the United States. And yes, livers will need to travel further. Not dramatically further, but on average 65 miles further. And yes, liver transport times will increase. Not dramatically longer, but on average 15 minutes more. Livers will need to travel. But that's the whole point of broader sharing, isn't it? More livers will go to places with greater disparity instead of the many people that travel to livers because they can. Some say local livers should stay locally or OPO performance and local patients will suffer. But the reality is that many livers are already leaving these communities and traveling inside of their new recipients. Here's a map showing the five busiest programs over the last two years that transplant roughly half or more of their deceased donor livers into patients from outside their own communities. All of these programs are in regions where the median melded transplant is the lowest in the country, 25 or less. Transplanting someone from across the country with a local liver is not serving local patients. It's just doing another transplant locally. By decreasing the variation in the median melded transplant, the new proposal will have local livers, roughly half of them actually serving the patients from within 150 miles of that donor's own community, not people who have flown across the country because they can, while others suffer because they cannot. Let me finish by saying that we also need to remember the donors in this discussion, all of them. They don't have a voice here, and they depend on us, they depend on us to utilize their organs appropriately and responsibly to help those most in need. Because equality is when two people who are equally as sick have an equal chance at life. And equity is when the borders of the map don't matter. It comes down to fairness. Might there be better proposals? Yes. And better proposals of those proposals. And better proposals of that one too. We should not. We cannot accept the status quo. We need to have the courage and the sensibility to make meaningful change and to make it now. If you want to change the geographic disparity, then change it.